Malachi Moreno is a Kentucky Wildcat. Boom. That is going to be the conversation on today's episode of the Wildcats Today podcast. I'm your host, Andrew Stefaniak, writer and editor over at Kentucky Wildcats on SI, joined as always by my very excited co-host, Mr. Carson Nash. Carson? Boom! Who's in the house tonight? UK! Come on, baby! Let's go! There we go! There we go! Stay home! That's how we do it! Stay here! Don't go anywhere else. Man, just put Cal in a locker. I'm kidding. That was a joke. That was a joke. I've been waiting to say that. I've been waiting. That was a joke. I don't think Arkansas was recruiting him that hard. That was a joke. I saw someone. I saw when it um when it felt like he was going to commit to Kentucky, I saw someone in the comments. And like once again, I don't think Arkansas was after him that hard. You know what I mean? Uh, but I saw someone just go, put Cal in a locker. <laughs> I love that. That was funny. That made me laugh. That was a joke. <laughs> Arkansas fans, please don't yell at me anymore. Um, but Carson, we were pretty confident uh, Malachi Moreno was going to commit to Kentucky. How confident? I was. I was a, a thousand percent confident. Well, we're recording on Thursday night, so we were that confident. But yeah. the point here is this: this is a big time get. Now you've still got. Another in-state player, we're not going to get into that, but you're working on here. But once again, these players like a Jasper Johnson and, of course, a Malachi Moreno, man, they're just not going to come that often. They're just not. These high four, five-star players in our state. We've had a pretty good happen. run at it, though. We have. with, with Recently, well, because before then, then. It, was, it was few and far between. But recent years, we've had some talent. But they were also – but you also got to think about it. They weren't – I mean – Travis and Reed weren't ranked all that crazy high. You know, I well, mean Reed was top 40, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. In the no, country. I know, but I'm saying I'm I'm saying like elite top 25 talent. Yeah, yeah. Reed was 15 true. spots away. That's that true. But um, so you can't miss on these players. Coach Pope is now one for one. He has got to go two for two, but we're not gonna really dive into that. That's another day of conversation. Carson, what are your thoughts on? Okay, I mean, obviously, Coach Pope was able to flip uh, Colin Chandler, who's technically a freshman from BYU. So that was his first high school guy. Then you flip Trent Noah. Um, well, I guess technically he decommitted, then, so it's not really a flip. But you get what I'm saying. Yeah. So, but this is his first 2025 guy. This is his first big time commit. His first. Yeah. Malachi Moreno, when all is said and done, number one center overall. Number one center overall. He's going to be a five star. I want to look up. So there's one service, and I'm going to tell you right now which one it is. I'm on on three. It's ESPN. ESPN has him at 37. All the others collectively have him on three, 21, um, 24, seven tw has him at 26, 20 uh, rivals has him at 24. If, if ESPN moved him up into the top 20, he'd probably be considered a five star. So I, when, I always throw it out the window when there's one. Right on that borderline is is so yeah. hard to judge. Agreed, but I, when there's one service that's keeping a player away from being a five star, it irks me. It, I mean, I I look at Malachi Moreno as a five star player. Yeah, but Carson, when it comes to, we'll get to him, Moreno as a player here in a minute. But like, how excited are you? How pumped up are you flat out about landing this player from a future recruiting standpoint? Oh, yeah, it's huge. One, it solidifies that we're still going to run this state uh, in yeah. talent, um, uh, of course, because Louisville didn't have a chance at him. Yeah. So we want to solidify the borders. We want everyone in Kentucky to pick Kentucky. Um, and it shows nationally that Pope can beat some big dogs. Um, yeah. It's not – I would say this one was probably his easiest recruiting win yes. Out, of, yes. out of the ones to come. Um, but I mean, needless to say, he's going to be a five star. I mean, he's the number one center in the country. He's, he's a freaking five star. Um, yeah, but yeah, I'm super excited. I think it's huge. And I also think it helps with Jasper Johnson. I think this commitment helps with Jasper Johnson because it shows that one, that someone from the state wants to play Kentucky and two, it shows that he's trusting Pope to develop him to get him to the next level and yeah. Jasper coming in with him would be exciting because then Jasper has another five-star teammate to go with. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with you on all that, but I mean, 
this is just now what I loved about this. This is what it gets me excited. I, I see on Twitter all day, every day, Coach. Oh, Coach Pope, he's not going to be a good recruiter. And I, now, what did Coach? So you might say, well, this was easy for him. You know, this it was easy, Landon Moreno. He made Malachi Moreno a priority from the second he, he took this job. Okay. Yeah, let's stop that talk immediately because he was not the coach of Kentucky. He was the coach of yeah. BYU not too long ago. And he got to Kentucky, and as soon as he got to Kentucky, he beat out Indiana, Louisville, all the schools that were recruiting Malachi the hardest they could, and he just took him from them. So, I mean, I think it's ridiculous. And he's a five-star player, so anytime you get a five-star, you're pretty happy. I'm also – I'm not – one thing that annoys me, you're going to see fans – Louisville fans, Arkansas fans, everybody. They're going to try Tennessee fans because they're always there somehow. The opposing fan bases are going to try and make you not be excited about this. Don't let them. This is a, this is a five-star player. This is a high, the highest four-star you can be or a five-star. Like This is a no-joke player. Do not let anybody make you not be excited about this. It's Friday. It's Friday, and you get a huge commit. First committed to 25 class. Be excited. Don't let anyone take that away from you. I get so fired up. One thing I'll never do, and the people that go on Twitter and, and try and rip people for no reason, not my thing. It, if if Tennessee lands a five star, and I know this is gonna about let them don't let them enjoy. It. Don't pull up some random stat about uh, uh how many yeah, points he scored in third let's grade. Yeah, how many po points the dude scored in his? He, well, he only scored three points in his third grade championship game. Like, don't pull stuff like that. Let let fans enjoy the exciting things for their school. And now you can make fun of other fan bases when you beat them in things. That's fine. Or beat them in recruiting battles. That's also fine. But I'm saying don't take things away when you know people are trying to enjoy something that that irks me. Um, but if you want to go for it though, you know, hey. But um, if it's Tennessee. If Tennessee is fine, actually, in, in Louisville. But besides that, let's be nice to everybody else. Um, so this is just – this is exciting because this is the start of the Pope era to me. This is what it feels like. This is his first guy. I know that Trent Noah and Colin Chandler and Travis Perry are all a part of it. But this – you know, that felt like, boom, real quick. This is his first recruiting win. And I think this is the start of a really exciting era of Kentucky basketball when it comes to recruiting. We asked the question – Will Mark Pope land elite players out of high school? Well, it's early, and he's already answered yes. So there you go. Now, you can give me any other spiel you got on, on how exciting this is, Carson, if you got it, but what do you like about Malachi as a basketball player? Yeah, I, I, I after watching some tape on him, I really think he fits our offense well, which yeah. is crucial for our to, for our success because if we don't have a big that can pass, he's a great passer. And he has a really pretty good jump shot that he, they can definitely develop over the years at Kentucky yeah. or year. Um, and so I think utilizing that, um, and he's very fluid. He's agreed. He's humongous. <laughs> he's every bit of seven one. It's not hard to tell which one he is on the floor when you're watching. Tampa. Yeah, it's it's yeah. actually. I think they're underselling him on height. Um, but he's fluid for that size. Um, he's good defensively. I mean, he has all the characteristics of a good big. It's just going to take him fitting in this system to really get to the highest potential he can he can get. Yeah, agreed. So what I like about Malachi, so here's the The jump shot doesn't ex excite me. I think that there are different types of centers and, and power forwards. The, like, I don't know. If, and I'm not you, saying, I'm not saying, like, go out and, like, just splash a bunch of threes. But yeah, threes, no, I know. But, like, beat, it's you can there. utilize them. It's there. Yeah. So for me... He made jump shots in all of the, you know, in some of the film I watched. That's not what gets me pumped up. I don't see him as that type of center. You know, I mean, like, once again, I look at Aaron Bradshaw and Big Z. I always thought that Big Z was a shooter like that, and Aaron Bradshaw, that, you know, he, he could shoot, but I don't know if we want that. Yeah. I think Malachi Moreno is going to, and I don't think it's ever going to be threes. I don't think he's ever going to be shooting threes. I think it's, is he going to be shooting little, you know, jump shots around the rim? But what I love about his film, some great passing, great vision. And I'm not just talking about like, oh, kick out to the open shooter. I'm talking like he gets the ball kind of up top on a few different plays and finds guys down low cutting, which is exactly what's going to happen in the system at Kentucky. He also 
finishes around the rim well. He's got a bag around the rim. He And it's not just dunking. He dunks a lot. Here's the deal. I would, too, if I was seven foot one. Yeah. You know, that's, that's the reality. I, would do. I wish I was seven one. It's why it's for fun when we play basketball on eight feet at your house. Yeah. But, you know, on eight foot rim, I mean. But the – the point here is what I like about his game is he's he's fluid. Like you said, around the rim, he's he's got a nice move around the rim. When I first started hearing about Moreno, and I heard, well, you know, he's a he's a big dunker, he's high. I'm like, I don't I don't like centers like that. I like the guys who can score around the rim with finesse and can dunk. Anybody that's seven foot that, can yeah can dunk. that and that's you know who that sounds like. I mean, coming into his freshman year, Nick Richards was so just dunk the ball. But then by his his junior year when he was player of the year, he was so fluid around the rim. He could baby hook, yeah. post move him up. Like it, it, the progression was amazing. Yeah. And that's a great point. So he also solid rebounder, strong hands. I saw a lot of blocked shots in the film. He Long arms, big wingspan. He's a great player. He's a great player. And for those that go, well, he's not, you know, a, a great – not everybody in the Mark Pope offense is meant is out there to shoot. Mario Williams is not here to shoot. Brandon Garrison's not here to shoot. You know, you want your four to be able to shoot. But point is, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't even be surprised if they utilize him at some point to shoot this year. Like, yeah, like just just be able to make one is like all I'm saying. Because then it's then you have to guard a little closer out there. That is true, and that can open some things up. But mm-hmm. he he he's fluid with the basketball. He's a strong rebounder. He blocks a lot of shots. He can dunk as any seven footer can, but he's also really he, a lot of finesse around the rim, and that is what you you want to see out of a player like him. A lot of finesse around the rim. So oh, that yeah. his post play is his post play is elite. I think that's yeah. the best part of his it's game. Beautiful. It's fun to watch. Yeah. It's like good it's, offensive it's, line. It's definitely play. the best part of his game. His post. Yes, play, which, I agree. Which is and, awesome because being mm-hmm. that fundamentally sound at that age is is awesome. When you have the opposing center, the opposing whoever's guarding you, maybe it's power forward, you know, lo- getting lost, you're going to score a lot of points. And he has the finesse on the rim to do that. So this is a huge commitment. Carson, any other thoughts to wrap up our excitement about Landon Moreno before we call it a day? A That's week? all I got. But um, I'm really excited about him. Uh, he's in-state kid, so that's going to make me cheer harder for him. Um, exactly. And it's a great start to the class. And I think uh, – I think we should uh, be getting closer in the Jasper Johnson uh, race. Hopefully this helps. Yeah, hopefully this helps. I'm so confident in that. We'll pr- I bet we end up having a- – I feel like we're really close on him making a decision. I no, bet yeah, that's that we- what I'm, yeah, we're getting closer to the deadline, which means I think it should become a really close race here soon. Yeah, I bet we end up having another wire. conversation about that probably even this week on the show, just like, like a full-on show because I have a feeling yeah. that's really close to being decided. Yeah. This is exciting. Everybody, enjoy this. Have a fun weekend. We're excited about it. I I couldn't be happier. First 2025 commit, and he's a damn good basketball player from our state. Really exciting stuff to see. That's going to do it for this week here at the Wildcats Today podcast. Once an extra episode this week with the commitment. Um, The plan is to, to get there for football season. We'll get more into that. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. That would really help the show out a ton. We appreciate it. Hit the like button. All helps us out a ton. Appreciate y'all so, so much. Hope everyone has an outstanding weekend. Enjoy this. I know we will, and we will see y'all on Tuesday right here on the Wildcats Today podcast.